Hello folks and welcome to App Screencast. Today I've got a Mac related video for you. I haven't done one of them for a while so I thought I'd make one. In this video I just want to show you an application called Amosoft DVD Creator. And as from the title you probably can imagine it's a DVD offering software. Basically move your, burn your movies onto DVD or even your pictures. But what I mostly use it for is obviously burning my videos to DVD. And reason I recommend in this application like I recommend other applications is it's because it's an application I either use or it's an application I think will be very useful to a lot of you out there so this is an application I use I've only been using it a week or so but at the minute I think it's a really great application and why would I recommend this over other applications for example iDVD or Toast Titanium by Roxy and the reason simple reason when I've used them applications I found the actual final DVD what you create the actual video quality is quite poor and what I found with um, Amosoft I found the actual final DVD the quality of videos is much better and um, on Windows um, a few years back I used to use an application called VSO Converter X and that was a great application and it used to do really good quality DVDs and I was really disappointed when I got my Mac and I was using iDVD and Toast because the actual quality was noticeably different noticeably less quality basically so now I found this application I'm really pleased and uh, I'll open it up and show you so you start off and what you need to do is either open an existing project up or create a new one so I'll create a new one what you can do here is you can go up to the plus sign and add a movie or you can just drag your movie in if you prefer which I will do on this occasion now as you can see my movies in here you can choose what quality you want so you've got standard which obviously takes less room up on the DVD so if you had maybe had two films or two videos you wanted to put on it once this would maybe be the way to go you can go to high quality, higher quality which is a bit better and obviously best performance which is what I normally go for and as you can see it takes up most of the DVD not giving me much space left and you can choose to burn it on a DVD 9 if you've got one of them but most people have obviously got DVD 5 DVD 9 is dual air discs which are quite more expensive so most people don't use them you probably won't need them anyway. A movie will fit on a normal DVD normally. So, as I said, you can drop pictures into this if you wanted to make a slideshow, but I'm just going to show you how to do a video. So, then you want to go on to menu and choose a menu, and as you can see here, you've got um, different menus you can choose. Various ones. Just double click it, and it gives you a little thumbnail of the actual film or whatever it is. But what I normally do is I always find these sort of applications that the menus don't look that good. I like personally don't think they do. So what I normally do is I just go on to see if I can find it. I just go to this one. It's in the static templates, 16 by 9. I just go no menu, double click it, and that basically gets rid of any menus. And the DVD will just play straight through without any menus, which I personally prefer. You might prefer a menu. I guess if you're burning more than one video to the DVD you might want a menu but anyway next up you can go to edit and this gives you a bit more control so over the actual at 29. just pause that if you, do, if you can't notice this is actually boxing which I've actually got here but anyway what you can do is you can actually crop the actual video so in this box you've got the current way, the way the original video looks the, the video you've just exported in and this is what it will look like when you burn it so you can change the aspect ratio so you can have full screen where you can see it stretches it out to the full screen that's what are good for TV shows because normally they're full screen you can make it 16 by 9 which is widescreen 4 by 3 which is standard not widescreen or you can just keep original you have to find out what's best for you probably keeping the original size is probably best then you can also add some effects if you wish change brightness, contrast, saturation and also volume so if it's really low volume video or really high volume you can obviously adjust that which is useful you can also add some effects if you wanted to I'm not sure you'd want to do that but you never know it's nice to have there if you can, just in case and some other features not sure what that means trim this is really useful actually you can actually trim the DVD so basically edit it so say I wanted to just have a part of the video Burn into the DVD, I can choose to trim it, etc. Pretty useful. Next up, if you wish, you can use a watermark. So basically, it's a small image you can add 
onto the corner of the screen or wherever, like you see on the TV. You sometimes have the um, channel logo in corner, quite useful. Also, you can rotate the actual video around if you wish. Why you'd want to do that again, I'm not sure, but you may have know you might do. So, that's all editing side. Not, not loads of options. Only option I would like to see in this application is the ability to add chapters, which unfortunately I don't think you can do, but it's not a big deal, I guess. So now I've done that, I can choose to play it and it gives me a preview of what the actual video will look like. So as you can see. But this is what you want to click to burn it. So click on this. Then you can choose to have a burn it to a DVD disc, which is obviously what you're probably going to want to do. So you can burn it to a DVD folder on your computer, or some ISO file or whatever. And these are just files for your computer. Maybe you want to burn it later, but save it onto your computer for now. You might want to do it. So I'm going to do a DVD. Name it. Oops, my, my, my um, keyboard has now lost connection with computer. But that's where you would normally name it if your keyboard was working then you want to choose which drive you're going to be using to burn it which is probably you only, probably only got one drive if you're using a Mac insert your DVD, I've just done that, push my DVD into the computer takes a bit for the um, Mac to recognise the DVD inserted as you can see it says no disc so just wait a second or two Ignore that. See, so as you can see now, I've inserted a D5 disc. And then you want to choose burn speed. I would just leave it at best. If you may be having failed burns or you're having problems, you might want to put it down to a lower speed, but you probably not have problems. Then now you want to choose the TV standards. Basically, this is what TVs you use in your country, basically. So if you're in America, it's going to be NTSC. If you're in England, for example, in United Kingdom, it's PAL. Um, if you're not sure, what TV you've got or what TV you use in your country you might want to just google it but anyway so now I've done it I can click save and burn it but now my keyboard's actually oh it's working now keyboard right so you put your title in as the DVD name and I just click save and now it's preparing the DVD and it'll just go through this process this might take 20 minutes depending on how big the, the actual film is or video or depending how quick your computer's processor is. So this might take 20 minutes, half an hour, depending. Then after this done this gone through this process, it will start burning it, burning the disc straight away. Pretty easy. And hopefully you will find the final DVD to be to your liking, which I personally found it to be very good. So yeah, I think pretty much I've summed up this video this um, application up pretty well. But you're wondering where to get it from, well I'll show you. So you can get the application from amosoft.com. What I'll do is I'll leave the link in the description so you can find it easy. Um, unfortunately the application isn't free, it does cost money, it's $49 so it's you know a bit pricey but I definitely think it's going to be an application you're going to find really useful. One good thing is you can actually download a free version to try it which is worth doing if you're not sure if you like or not like it. Definitely worth doing to just test the application out to see if it's to your standards. Um, also it's Intel version only so it's only if you've got an Intel Mac also there's a window version version I couldn't tell you if that's any good or not because I've never used it but definitely the Mac version I think is pretty good and you can find more information on this site about the application so yeah thanks for watching the video hopefully you found it helpful and don't forget to uh, like subscribe and also if you wish you can follow me on Twitter at twitter.com slash app screencast where I do loads of tweets about Mac related stuff, Apple related news etc. So yeah thanks for watching guys and I'll see you later. Goodbye.